Good evening, St. James. For this week's evening prayer, I want to read to you from The Magician's Nephew. It's a book by a man called C.S. Lewis, um, a long time ago. Um, I want to read a little bit and then think a little bit about our Bible and about our experience in relation to the book. So this book is uh, The Magician's Nephew. It's about a little boy called Diggory and a little girl, and they end up in this world uh, with a horrible queen, their uncle Andrew, a cab driver, and just the two of them, Diggory and Polly. So when they get to this world, um, uh, they say this. They're trying to work out where they are. And they say, and really, it was uncommonly like nothing. There were no stars. It was so dark they couldn't see one another at all. And it made no difference whether you shut your, kept your eyes shut or opened. Under their feet there was a cool, flat something, which might have been earth and was certainly not grass or wood. The air was cold and dry, and there was no wind. And then this happened. In the darkness, something was happening at last. A voice had begun to sing. It was very far away and Diggory found it hard to decide from what direction it was coming. Sometimes it seemed to come from all directions at once. Sometimes he almost thought it was coming out of the earth beneath them. Its lower notes were deep enough to be the voice of the earth herself. There were no words. It was hardly even a tune, but it was... Beyond comparison, the most beautiful noise he had ever heard. It was so beautiful, he could hardly bear it. The horse seemed to like it too. He gave the sort of whinny a horse would give if, after years of being a cab horse, it found itself back in an old field where it had played as a foal, and saw someone whom it remembered and loved coming across the field to bring it a lump of sugar. Gold, said the cabbie. Ain't it lovely? And then two wonders happened at the same moment. One was that the voice was suddenly joined by other voices, more voices than you could possibly count. They were in harmony with it, but far higher up the scale, cold, tingling, silvery voices. The second wonder was that the blackness overhead all at once was blazing with stars. They didn't come out gently one by one, as they do on a summer evening. One moment there had been nothing but darkness, the next moment a thousand, thousand points of light leapt out, single stars, constellations and planets, brighter and bigger than any in our world. There were no clouds, the new stars and their new voices began at exactly the same time. If you had seen and heard it, as Diggory did, you would have felt quite certain that it was the stars themselves that were singing, and that it was the first voice, the deep one, which had made them appear and made them sing. Glory be, said the gabby, cabby, I'd have been a better man all my life if I'd known there were things like I don't know what you uh, thought when you heard the story. C.S. Lewis was a Christian. He heard the gospel from a man called Tolkien who wrote um, The Rings, The Fellowship of the Rings and that whole hobbity stuff. I want to read though the Bible's rendition of the creation of the world. C.S. Lewis down. So I'm reading from the NRSV, which is the uh, the Bible that we read it whenever um, we were at college. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
and God saw that the light was good. And God said, let there be stars in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for, for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give a light upon the earth. And it was so. I love the way that C.S. Lewis has written the creation story. It sounds so much like the Genesis song. God spoke, God utters, and in, in C.S. Lewis, God sings. But because there's no, there's nothing. It's an intangible beauty, incredible loveliness and I noticed the horse so beautiful the, the, the song was so beautiful that you could hardly bear it and the horse liked it too and he gave a sort of whinny of a horse could would give if after years of being a cab horse it found itself back in the old field where it had played as a foal and saw someone whom it remembered and loved coming towards him to bring him a lump of sugar I think sometimes we feel, I feel like a cab horse. I'm just working, just busy, just living. And there's something about coming to God that is coming back home. I don't know if you ever feel, oh, I just want to go home sometimes. I miss something in my root of my being, something in my core that knows me and loves me something the root of well, your home and this is such a lovely description of that found itself back in the old field where it played as a foal someone who you remember and love coming across the field towards you with a lump of your favourite stuff your sugar and it's a bit like that Sam, um, it's a really famous Sam, I made you in your mother's womb, you are wonderfully made. This idea that when we live our life as a cab horse, sometimes we forget that we didn't start off as a cab horse, we started out free. We didn't start out walking streets and working. We were created. We are created beings. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. Just like that horse in the field. You search out my path and my lying down. And you're acquainted with all my ways. Even before words on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. You lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful me, wonderful for me. So high I can't attain it. This idea that God knows us and loves us. This idea that his spirit and being in his presence is too much for us to bear. Not because it's too awful. It's awesome, but because it's too beautiful to put into words, too amazing, too incredible, too... It touches that soul, that heart, that core. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed and shawl, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle in the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, the light around me and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you and the night is as bright as the day for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. 
In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them has yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I tried to count them, and they are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. How intimate is that? God formed our parts before even our mothers knew we were there. If you were to get all the good thoughts of God, because he is good and he is love, about you, the book would be too weighty, because he thinks so much good for you and for me. And just like that horse that uh, did a kind of whinny as if he remembered that he wasn't always a cab horse and that he was home in his field and that somebody had had uh, sugar for him, someone who he loved had sugar for him. And so we, when we come to the presence of God, we remember that we are not cab horses and that we are loved and that we are free. I think when we meet Jesus when we find ourselves in his presence. That's when we feel like we're coming home. Because it's not that we've discovered something new or that God has discovered us. It's that we're coming home to our creator. We're coming home to the being that put the stars in the sky and put us together. Sometimes through all of this change, and I think we as a family, we're tired at the moment because as lockdown changes and eases, it's change and change is exhausting. So we're tired. And you've got this feeling in your heart, of, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to I want to be known and found and loved. I want to be held. I want to be free and okay. And it's a call that we all have and it's the call of God. It's the call of God in our hearts saying, come on. Come, come to my heart. Let me give you sugar. And actually, it's a sense that is so beautiful, you can hardly bear it. It seemed like it was so beautiful, they could hardly bear it. And the cab driver becomes like the vocal. He goes, gold, ain't it lovely? And sometimes that's all life is, isn't it? We start going, wow, it's lovely. It's about noticing lovely because we know we're going home. And we know that this isn't all there is. And we know that God is making something more beautiful for us. Glory be, said the cabin. I'd have been a better man all my life if I'd known there were things like and that song, that creation song, that God speaks in Magician's Nephew and speaks in our Bible, is a song that is calling each of us every day of our lives. Come, be who you're made to be. Be free. Be free. Know that you are loved. Do you know, nowhere in that sound. And nowhere in our creation story in Genesis. And nowhere in the in the creation story in in um, C. S. Lewis, the Magician's Nephew, does God ever look at his new creation and say, Yeah, that'll do. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. That's what the psalmist writes. And in our Genesis reading, God made it and he saw that it was good. And that's you and me he's talking about. Um, not just creation and the world around us. So this story goes on. Um, on through creation, the voice carries on singing. Do you know, there's something very creative about singing. 
and I know our Bible says God spoke and yeah there's authority in speak there's authority in uttering and creation happens but I love the idea that creation happens in song um, and then there's the founding of Narnia and we meet um, a lion and there's a joke and there's a garden and there's a temptation so what I want to do this week is I'm going to pick out bits from this book and read them and look at where they resonate in the Bible and look at where they resonate in our faith journey. We're going to talk about it and then we are going to pray. So that's it for today, Monday evening. So let's pray. Calm Holy Spirit, that breath, that wind that swept over creation. voice in the darkness. Without you we have no life. Through you life is formed. Thank you that you say we are beautifully and wonderfully made. And Father, we accept those words as true. Thank you that to be in your presence It's almost too much to bear. Because you are so beautiful. You are so wonderful. And so Father, would you help us to understand a little bit more this evening. And Father, as we sit in your presence, as your people and as your children, like the stars sang with you in the magician's nephew we sing with you now we sing with you for creation we sing with you for healing of the nations father would you sing in places where Christians are struggling? Would you sing strength and grace and peace to them? Places where it's illegal to follow you. Would you sing your peace? And Father, we think of our brothers and sisters who at the moment are grieving. Those who are most deeply affected by Black Lives Matter. Would you sing it to their hearts of your love, of their uniqueness and specialness? Remind us of that promise at baptism. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Father, would you sing to creation as it grieves 
burdened down by plastic and global warming? Would you breathe your refreshing fire? Teach us to be stewards of the earth that you have given birth. Father, would you sing to those in authority? I pray that Justin Welby would hear your voice this evening and know that he is found. I pray that Bishop Sarah would hear your voice this evening and know that she is found. That Bishop Pete would hear your voice this evening and know that he is found. We pray that Boris Johnson would hear your voice this evening and hear that he is found. And we pray for Alperton and Harrow, for London and Perivale. Father, would you breathe your spirit of healing on our land? Your spirit of strength and grace to our doctors and nurses. those who are working during this pandemic. Father, thank you that you promised never to leave us and you have not left us now. Father, we hear your call because what you want is to be near us, to find us free. And so, Father, we strip off all that would get in the way, our pretensions, our hopes, our dreams. All we want, Father, is you. be found in you and known as yours. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together in the language of your heart. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. I wish you a wonderful night, a safe night, a sleep-filled night. May you know God singing over you and bringing you awake for tomorrow morning. Night, St. James. God.